in replacing the cockpit drains, um, I had to uh, grind off the through holes that were here. Uh, they were seized into the uh, the fitting that went to the hose, the hose barb. And as you can see, it was a flush through hull. Uh, this is, uh, the hull has been recessed here about a quarter inch. Unfortunately, I was unable to find that size flush through hull. So basically I'm forced to use a standard uh, Groco through hull. Uh, in order to do that, I need to fashion a plug out of fiberglass cloth and mat. And I'm going to uh, just glass it into there and we'll see how that comes. And here's the finished product. Bowl is drilled, sanded down. Um, I went over it with uh, some more, a couple coats of epoxy. So for the seacocks, for the cockpit drains, and this is for the bilge pump, uh, I was able to locate some more uh, G10 that was not outrageously priced. Um, cut it, shaped it, uh, got the bronze screws in the back, or rather pushed through the back. Um, and the epoxy, I'm going to epoxy the whole backing block to the hull. In all cases, uh, how to get new through hulls also. The triangular backing blocks have been glassed to the hull uh, with um, West Systems epoxy thickened with 406 and uh, some chopped fiberglass. And as others have discovered before me, trying to put seacocks in an area where there wasn't any previously there was just um just the hose barb sticking out from the through hole uh you run into problems even though they're offset and uh tim lackey in maine who uh, uh restores boats for a living uh, actually ran into the exact same problem on a contest 26 that he did recently in his case he uh cut the backing block block uh, back off um, the starboard one and relocated it further aft. Uh, I am not planning to do that. I think at this point, um, well, I got a couple options here. Maybe, maybe not even. So <clears throat> this is the barb from the old one. I was wondering if I can get that in deep enough to clear this, but I don't think that's the case. What I may do is just abandon the idea of having seacocks and just uh, going with the normal uh, factory specification. Maybe just use a flanged, um, a flanged bottom, and then put a barb on that. Uh, of course, I mean. <clears throat> I have these wood plugs in case the hose did come off and that was really the only reason for having a uh, valved seacock here um, although I mean the, the, the cockpit floor is screwed down so um, I was planning to kind of um, rectify that with a, a deck plate to access these in case of an emergency so I may very well just end up abandoning the idea of seacocks And in the meantime, while um, I get that situated, I have epoxied in backing block, a G10 backing block for the uh, bilge pump seacock. And next I'm going to just basically sand out the, this aft part of the bilge and paint it with uh, bilge coat. And there it is. The bilge has been painted. Um, and I've also painted the engine with uh, POR15 uh, in aluminum color, which I much more prefer over the original metallic gray, which always looks dirty to me.
two days later. Okay, change in plans. As it turns out, I decided that I am going to relocate that through hall. I've already taped it up and started beveling it from outside. Um, had to cut off the G10 backing block, which was uh, an adventure, um, but uh, a good sign that uh, of how strong that thing is. And here's the area beveled from outside. Um, that's six inches from here to here. Uh, so it's a 12 to 1 ratio. Uh, of course, there's a curvature to the hull, so hopefully I'll be able to work that out with the peel ply. Um, I used a grinder with a uh, lapper wheel attached, and that, that made this pretty easy. Um, and also uh, just a regular orbital sander afterwards to kind of uh, make sure it's even uh, and feathered. So I've made the patch um, out of uh, about 12 or so layers of fiberglass, largest one down, uh, and then stepwise coming coming out towards the inside, uh, to the outside. Um, this is a piece of peel ply. Um, I squeegee it out, um, the epoxy that I use, West Systems epoxy, and then <clears throat> went over it with this fin roller, uh, which worked out really well for taking out bubbles. Um, got this idea from Mads, who uh, has the Sail Life channel. Um, he's done, he's used this several times over the years, and um, finally got a chance to use it. It worked out good. Okay, it's a one day later, so I'm now going to see how this came out. Oh yeah, baby, that looks good. Hard as a rock. This is the inside part. <clears throat> There it is. Next step, I've given it a uh, sanding, uh, try to knock out any high spots. Quick coat of unthickened epoxy. First coat of fairing compound, which is uh, West Systems epoxy with 407 low density filler. Second coat of fairing compound, this one with a slightly thinner consistency. The next day I've sanded the fairing compound smooth and to the correct contour. One more coat of unthickened epoxy, kind of makes this look like a cave painting. And lastly I've barrier coated the surface in prep for painting the bottom, which will be done all at once. And I've temporarily mounted the um, seacocks here to the newly configured um, through hull uh, with the backing blocks that are back on there. So I'm going to remove these uh, for now so I can address all of the other things I need to do. Um, like the uh, prop shaft seal uh, as well as the steering pedestal. So I finished reinstalling the prop shaft here um, beginning with the coupler uh, which is new. I just need to put some uh, seizing wire between the two set screws and also paint, paint it prevent rust for maybe a little while. Um, instead of the original stuffing box, I went with a PSS shaft seal. Um, insulation was pretty straightforward. Uh, you can still see the line here from where I had to compress it. Also added the optional stainless collar there for um, extra security. The hose here is the air vent, and I believe the Older models didn't even have this feature. You had to actually burp them. 
um, and the the hose actually terminates up here on this hydronic uh, vent which needs to be secured a little better um, and essentially I, I had gotten this idea from a website called marinehowto.com it's a vent for a hydronic heating system in a house and it allows air out and then there's a float in here um, and that closes it off once water reaches here um, it is made of brass uh, I believe it's plated with something probably zinc um, and it's, it's high enough where if the boat heals uh, wouldn't be an issue but even if it did um, like I said the the vent actually closes because of the float So I had planned to remove the backing plate that's on the bottom of the pedestal here underneath. Um, and I'm glad I did, uh, even though, I, well, it was rusty, so I wanted to probably replace it anyway. Uh, but when I went to take off the four nuts that are on those bolts, three out of the four literally broke off as soon as I put the socket on them. <laughs> so once I get that off, I'll make a better assessment. And here it is. The rusty plate that I tried to remove it took me a while, but I got it. I'm going to see about that. Also took off the pulleys. I'm going to have to take those apart, grease them, get rid of any galvanic corrosion. Uh, the fourth bolt, the one that didn't break before, actually broke when I pulled the pedestal off. So uh, we need four new ones and i um, glad this happened now and not at sea. I've rebuilt the idler for the steering pedestal, starting with the bronze sheaves, uh, cleaned those up, uh, dismantled and lubricated them. Um, the the ba steel backing plate here is replaced with half inch G10 board. This actually is half inch high from the way these uh, pulleys would sit on here. Um, and I had to make some modifications here, so this one's not bolted on. There's a little caterpillar there. Um, it would actually sit like this and th these were adjustable there was a grommet that was pressed onto here and then a bolt over here these were would adjust like this but because I don't need them to be adjustable I only need them to sit in one direction uh, all I did was just drill drill an extra hole right here and that allows me to just kind of bolt it on just like that I was able to dismantle the sheaves for uh, cleaning out the corrosion in there and in there cleaning up the pin placing this um, all I did really was use heat uh, propane torch and then tap the uh, the housing here to uh, loosen it up and it worked out well so I did all four and they should be good to go back in the boat. At this point I was able to reinstall the pedestal. Um, required quite a bit of work here. Um, I've re-bedded it, uh, ran some new wires for the compass. The chain, uh, same chain, but I did replace the wire that goes to the, the quadrant here. Um, new clamps in there. Also, was able to finish the majority of the rest of the bilge here. Uh, did get some new through hulls for the cockpit drains. And hooked up all of the hoses. Muffler, um, new fuel hoses, new uh, raw water cooling hoses. And pretty much the only thing left to do here in the bilge is to finish hooking up the raw water strainer. Um, and insulate the the engine room or engine compartment here uh, and I'm glad to be done with the bilge <laughs>